everyone, welcome back to the channel. We are discussing the most disappointing films of 2019. And my opinion is going to differ from yours, but that is the fun of this. Let's have a conversation down below. Like, comment, let me know what your list is of the most disappointing films. And don't forget to hit that red subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get started with number 10. It's Dumbo. I had high expectations for Dumbo. I wanted it to exceed everything. It had a great cast, cute little Dumbo, but unfortunately it just did not work for me. I think it's because of the director choice. I'm not sure if Tim Burton was the right director to fit with this film. And also it focused on the humans where I wanted to see more of Dumbo. His name is the title. I want to see the baby elephant. It was so adorable. It was so cute. But yet we focused on the two child actors that can't even act. Enough said. My number nine is Good Boys. This film is the case of all the good parts you've seen in the trailer. Number eight, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. And I know I'm going to get some flack for this. However, my reasons are justified. I felt cheated when I saw this film. I thought it was being advertised as a movie that focused on a reporter doing an article on Mr. Rogers. And it is in there. However, the focus of the film is more on the reporter and his home life and his background. I didn't care about the reporter. I don't know who the reporter is. I want Mr. Rogers. I wanted Tom Hanks. And I just felt really, really disappointed that is why it's I just felt so cheated number seven is a very small film probably not a lot of people saw it called after the wedding Michelle Williams Julianne Moore two actresses that I personally love I think they are amazing the story is where it failed because their performances were incredible Julianne Moore actually has one scene where you almost start crying with her. But this story, it's a storyline with some secrets that are going to be revealed and told. But the problem is that it's revealed way too soon. And then the story takes a hard left and it goes over here somewhere. But it didn't satisfy me. Number six is Godzilla, King of the Monsters. And this was a disappointment because this was the big Memorial Day weekend, start of summer release we were excited my dad loves Godzilla again you focus on the humans it's called Godzilla king of the monsters I want to see Godzilla put Godzilla in front of me put all the monsters in front of me I don't care about the humans I'm not invested in them I want to see the monsters number five is Maleficent mistress of evil again Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. However, Maleficent goes away in the middle of the film and she don't come back until the very end in the battle scene. What is that about? I don't know. How can you have a movie called Maleficent without Maleficent? The movie was also too long. Plots were a little confusing. Not highly confusing, just a little bit. The subplot where all of her, she finds all the rest of her kind. Honestly, I didn't really care about that and I was bored with it. Number four is Men in Black International. This should have been a slam dunk. You have a great cast with Chris Hemsworth, Tessa, Tessa Thompson, Liam Neeson, Emma Thompson, Kumal Nanjiani. The storyline was weak and the plot was weak. The high points were... The updated guns and the arsenal, that stuff was amazing to look at. The storyline was the weak point. Number three, and I know I'm hearing it right now and I'm seeing it in the comments. I know I'm going to get flack for this and I apologize. It's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Don't hate me. I know, guys, I'm sorry. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood... I was hyped, okay? I'd seen the trailer so many times. I loved the concept of Leo and Brad finally together, working in a movie together. Then you have Margot Robbie 
and Al Pacino and Kurt Russell, all of these actors together. Amazing cast. Quentin Tarantino. I mean, come on. This is a recipe to be put together and have something amazing. But it was way too long. It was so long. And the scenes were so long and I didn't understand why and I was just sitting there like why is Brad Pitt going to the cult place why is he looking for this per that's where you could have cut time out that's where you could have cut out at least a half hour what was the point of that I didn't even know now I'm gonna sound like a hypocrite because I did buy it on blu-ray but that's because I have every other Tarantino film on blu-ray and you got to have a complete set. OCD. You just got to do it. I'm going to watch it again. I'm going to have more of an open mind. Maybe I missed something. Don't hate me. Don't hate me. All right. Number two is Terminator Dark Fate. We all know why. We all know the first five minutes. I'm not even going to go over it. But we had the return of Sarah Connor herself, Linda Hamilton, coming back for Terminator. And this film actually had a lot of potential until we brought back Arnold. I think once that happened, the first half of the film was actually doing okay. When it was just the women, we were focused on the ladies. And then once Arnold came in, it kind of veered. And it went off track and it never really got back on. Hence the letdown. My number one on this list, again, is going to be probably a shocker. Like, really, is this the most disappointing? For me, it is. It's It Chapter 2. And this is because It Chapter 1 was pretty much spot on perfect. The cast was amazing. Those kids were fantastic. A great director. Visually great and wonderful to look at. I mean, I'm... <sighs> Skarsgård. Why am I blanking on his... Bill Skarsgård. Amazing as Pennywise. The perfect Pennywise. And then we have It Chapter 2 that is way, 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 way too long. It has Once Upon a Time in Hollywood Syndrome of being way too long, almost three hours long. Pennywise is barely in the film, not as much as the first one. So that was a little disappointing for me. And then the individual sections of the storylines, you could have cut that away. And I understand wanting to stay true to the author's work, but Stephen King was probably smoking something when he was writing this, this book. And the ending, you could have changed that. It is very weak compared to the ending of It Chapter One. It just didn't match up. That's why. That's the reasoning why. I mean, the saving grace for me with this film was the adult cast, particularly Bill Hader. I thought he was fantastic in this film. But I think we had such a hype for It Chapter 2 because Chapter 1 was so wonderful and we were just so excited and looking forward to Chapter 2 and we were seeing photos and behind the scenes. And again... Just a major, major letdown disappointment. So let me know your thoughts down below. Do you agree with me? Yes or no? What is your opinions on what is the worst? Please do not hate me about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I am going to give it another chance. Don't forget, don't forget to hit that red subscribe. And I'll see you at the movies.